Every summer, people from around the world come to the Niagara region to visit the forts and participate in reenactments of the Battle of 1812. For these reenactors, wearing woolen uniforms on a hot summer's day is no picnic. They're carrying up to 30 pounds of kit and their mouths are dry from chewing on gunpowder. The only thing they're not experiencing is the fear that would be in the real battle line. So while the light infantry work in pairs and one man covers the other man, in line battle, one company fires while another company advances. In July 1814, Fort Erie was captured by the last American army to invade Canada. The American version was ten times bigger, and what you're in would have just been a, a small cornerstone of a much bigger fortified camp that the U.S. Army laid out. At its maximum, it had close to 4,000 men living in it. Those American troops would have marched along what is now the Niagara Parkway to Chippewa. Here, a military trail takes you around the most well-preserved black powder battlefield in North America. And this is where, for the first time on an open field, the U.S. infantry matched British musketry. A monument honors the British, American, and native soldiers who died here. The Battle of 1812 actually took place over four years and ended with the Battle of New Orleans in February 1815. But for those that fought in the Niagara region, it ended here at Fort Erie in 1814. By the end of 1814, uh, the American public actually is tired of war. Certainly the British public are exhausted from 20 years of war with revolutionary and Napoleonic France. So both sides are, are out of money, exhausted, tired of the heavy casualties. The casualty rates and engagements are getting much, much worse. So what we would consider a major battle in, in 1812, by 1814, we don't even give them a name. So eventually the weather's getting cold, news arrives that Washington DC has been torched by British soldiers, and on November the 5th, 1814, uh, the U.S. Army destroys what's left of this fort. They head back home to Buffalo, New York, and we've been good friends ever since. For more information, visit our website on topoftheworld.net.